<laughs> not, <laughs> not in roasted. What's up? We talking about the connection between race and religion. Why Christians leave the church? Yeah, we over here watching black atheists versus black Christians. Can everyone hear? Can everyone hear good? Mm -hmm. A lot of those black people met up in churches in order to, you know, talk about and, you know, fight for the freedom of black people. A little quiet. I mean, so we have a lot of gospel music in our culture as well. I know you guys have probably heard some, even the atheists probably grew up hearing a lot of gospel music. Even now that shapes our How's that? How's that right there? Well, I think it was even. Is it louder than me? Just civil rights. It goes yeah. back to slavery. I hope not. To so many things as a part of our history. Yeah, I think the black church fundamentally has helped African-Americans stay together. Even today, the black church serves as a central hub for African-Americans to, uh, to gather and share ideas, even in my family. Uh, the black church was definitely pivotal for our development. I think the black church contributed to the, the culture of black folks, just keeping us together as best we could, as best the church could, I think giving us hope. Mm -hmm. I think it was also a place of education for most of us as black folks, a place for talent and freedom of expression. So I definitely think it has a, a bond around us. Yeah, I 100% agree. I feel like there was a community significantly found um, within the church for the black community. Um, like you said, education and music. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I, 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 I know this is a topic, but let's, uh, you know, let's, 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 let's give some acknowledge to this beautiful lady right here. She, she just, uh, man, I just, you know, I just like, you know, everything just went mute for me and I'm just watching her mouth. I, it, it's, it's crazy. Wait, yeah, let, let, let's let's proceed. Hold, wait, wait, hold up now. Let me, let me. I may need some water. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Um, there was a lot of belief, especially with what was happening during the slavery time. There was a lot of unity that brought people together and brought them hope. Um, in Watch out, he starts to show in. It is, I'm thirsty. Finding the Lord through that. So I believe that it definitely has shaped the black um, churches and the black community today. Yes, uh, the black church has played a pivotal role into. Um, our time here in the United States as black people. Yes. Um, but the black church, I believe, doesn't define us as black people. Is it, it doesn't. necessarily Not to me. Not the to greatest me. thing for us? I definitely don't believe that. Well, I would piggyback off of that because uh, the black church, as we understand it within our context, is one thing. But we, what we forget is that black people and black Christians are not a monolith. So, for instance, there are 45,000 plus. I do like Christian black gospel music. That, that shit is a cheat code, 100%. You know, However, I do have family. I ain't gonna lie, that shit. Like, like, so I'm not gonna lie. Like, that gospel music be on point. Like, I still remember to the day, graduating fifth grade, we the victory, we the victory. <laughs> I'm laughing at it. <laughs> we the victory. <laughs> That was we we will scream we the victory. I forgot. <laughs> to this day we were screaming at bitch, bro. It was insane. It definitely does have its extent, but it's not all encompassing as you appreciate the lyric as well. I'm curious, would you say the same thing about black atheists as not a monolith? Well, of course. I mean, <sighs> I think whenever you paint anyone as a monolith, you've already shut down all kinds of conversation. So there's many reasons why someone may choose. It sounds like you guys might have grown up in the black church or been at least exposed Her to ass ready to sit in them seats, bro. To leave, and they're not all the same. I'm curious, what is that distinction for you two? Well, I'm a black atheist and I'm an agnostic atheist, meaning that, you know, maybe there's something out there, but most likely there's probably not a Jesus or Jesus up in the sky or Jesus coming back or anything like that mm -hmm. that's going to come and save us. Me personally, um, I study a sector of African spirituality. Right, the, re, uh, the way that I happened to stumble upon that, um, I started to ask myself questions like, who do my ancestors worship? Right, what is the point and people of start clapping? Uh, religion? That's when everything is high, 100%, bro. Around globally, right? And um, doing research, you start to see that uh, Christianity became synonymous with white supremacy around the fourth century with Constantine uh, the emperor, mm. right? In which they made it uh, the Roman national religion. If you refuse to adhere to his uh, Christian rule, then you would be beheaded. So I think that uh, historically speaking, Christianity has been used to oppress and enslave a lot of people globally. I think it's great that you take it that far back, but, but I think you have to really separate theology from black theology. I'm, well, I'm gonna put my two cents on that. Like, and I honestly don't know, 
But I remember back in the day, them slavery days, bro, they used to say, man, like, like, like they were like force, like force Christianity on people, like especially like black slaves and stuff like that. And I hear like, and this is coming, you know, and this is coming from, you know, some people, you know, they in the culture, like they did say some of them, you know, they end up rewriting the Bible, you know what I'm saying? You know, for us to be, you know, be slave slaves, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That's what they, you know, that's what they say. You know what I'm saying? I can't, you know, I can't, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't have no evidence of that, but like I know people said, man, like they rewrite, like they rewrote some stuff in the Bible to like you know really just make them just 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 slave slaves. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's crazy. Theologies for for the sake of conversation, because I think that when I talk to a lot of atheists and agnostics, we speak from the vacuum of black experience, and we already understand in America, number one, that's troubled water, right? Globally, it's also troubled water. I think a, a broad blanket would cover that it's suppressed people of color. We don't see ourselves in scripture. We don't see ourselves being, you know, told. And when we did, when we were learning these stories in church back in slave times, we were told that our God wanted us to be slaves. Okay. So that right there, that right there, that right there, like that was one of those things where like, it was like, you know, they wanted us to be slaves and shit like that. It, it, it was insane. Like, I, I was like, man, I was like, ain't no way. But, like, I remember, like, looking up some other shit, like, doing research on some stuff about, like, the word slave back in the day. Like, I heard the word slave back in the day. It actually wasn't that, like, wasn't terrible. It, I, it I, Like, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. I did some research on it, and I ain't going to explain it because I may. So that very thing was you sound pretty bad of what I'll say, and I don't agree with it. I'm, I'm just, I'm with that along. Lies I'm with that along. Hopefully they will cover it because I'm bad at, at explaining things, I'll tell you. Okay, so. You suppress us. For heaven's sakes, the KKK came out of the church, right? So we do have a problem and we can't My just shirt. say the church is the end all to be all. It's a complicated conversation. I with us, I, uh, I, let's, let me just put a pin on that. Uh, if you, let's get to the three gears and. Mm -hmm. Oh, the atheists? Oh, yeah, shit. So I disagree that the black church has shaped black culture, especially as in the affirmative entire. I knew she was on Demon Time. Because what that does is it, it ignores our ancestors before the transatlantic slave trade. It ignores the fact that they had their own cultural beliefs and that there were many contributions that black folks have made to this country wow. that were not centered in Christianity. Please. When we uh, think about Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who was the founder of Negro History Week, who was Harvard educated, who had deep criticisms of the black church. His roots were in free thought uh, you're right, you're and right. in criticism. Uh, Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote A Raisin you're absolutely Son, right. I, oh yeah, I uh, Zora Neale Hurston, uh, the they are. author, there they are. and uh. other black folks who were not religious at all, just because it is prevalent does not mean that it has entirely shaped our, our communities for the better. And I think that we have to be mindful of the diversity that has been within our communities that has not always been rooted in Christian and religious faith. Right, you know you want to see these blue books, bro. Ignored the you know you want to see these, man. Stop, Stop playing, act like you don't want to see. Far too long. See, you know. <laughs> if you see, if you see it, that means you I believe actually, it. I actually agree with you. Because right now, I, don't I have no nipples at all. So if you see a nipple, that means you actually want to see in my chest. Like, I'm just you know, throwing it out there. It into something completely different. So I think I'm just saying, if you saw nipples, cultures, you want um, them bitches. I think that true biblical Christianity looks at somebody in a different culture and says, hey, even though you're of this culture, even though you believe in uh, different things or whatever, you can still be welcomed in the kingdom of God. Well, I find that very interesting because, as someone previously said, there are what forty-five thousand denominations of Christianity. Some yeah. that might be more welcoming, and some that are totally damning. Right. And we're talking about the same book. We're talking about the same text that has been interpreted. Some for that has been used in the positive, and some that has definitely been used to enslave our ancestors. Exactly. So it. So it's so many like. Especially like King James books out there, bro. It is ridiculous. And I saw all of those books, bro. Like, man, if you look at all those books from back then <laughs> until now, bro, that's a <laughs> it's some shit you were reading there. You'd be like, oh no, holy! Like, it's 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 insane. 
sectors, mm -hmm. disenfranchise our communities, mm -hmm. and also look at things through a lens that has demoralized us. Mm -hmm. So we, ha we cannot ignore that. Um, as far as yeah, I want to speak so. to something going back to something that you had sp said um, about your belief systems now within the uh, African spirituality and stuff like that, which I think is wonderful, actually. And I don't think it's actually too far from some of the things that we might believe, you know, as Christians. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a, a constantly erroneous thought that Constantine came and did all of these things. Christians were being persecuted in Rome and in throughout you know, the, the, the Middle East far before Constantine, right? And then that doesn't, I mean, if we're gonna talk about the roots of Christianity, how do you explain the Tawahedo Church, the Ethiopian Ta Tawahedo Church, oh. which was never anything that was forced upon the Ethiopian people. Oh. In fact, in the Bible, oh. you have in Acts where an Ethiopian was baptized and went to spread the gospel to all the people. Where do you think he went as an Ethiopian? Mm. You know, so there are roots of Christianity, which are far beyond this conquering of Constantine and all mm. that stuff. But what I will say in complete agreement with all of you, with everyone here, is that Christianity as a whole has been abused. It has Absolutely. been taken. It has yeah. been used to demoralize just because there are people who are infiltrators, just there, there are people who will use the word of God against us as people. It does not invalidate what he said and what he taught. This narrative of Christianity is the white man's religion. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was white. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. To respond to that, I think that my point was that in the fourth century, it became synonymous with white supremacy, mm -hmm. right? So it did not spawn, right? So, so um, Christianity, as you said, was actually... And, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's crazy because, um, you know, and I'm not speaking on people's beliefs or whatever, you know, because, um, it, it <laughs> you know, like, you know, like people had like these drawings of like Jesus, like being like so white. It 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 used to like I don't know, man. Like back in the day, I I used to thought like I thought that was actually like Jesus. Like I thought Jesus was white, bro. But until I read uh uh, I forgot which book that was, and I forgot what's the name of that book. But they said that that those white pictures of him was actually like. Uh, what like what like they did an art of some prints or something like that and like that 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 what came of it you know what i'm saying and uh i just oh man it's 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 crazy out there and you know got everybody thinking that you know he's white you know what i'm saying because i know in the bible it said that he was bronze he was bronze you know what i'm saying and he didn't have like straight hair. He had like curly hair. You know what I'm saying? Like curly, like brown hair. I think it, it was crazy. In Africa, right? But I believe that today, I believe that Black Christians, and of course, I'm not here to disrespect any of you guys, mm -hmm. but I believe that um, the modern iteration of Christianity, right, spawning from the jail to Christian, uh, from the uh, Judeo-Christian belief system, has forced Black Christians to speak a lot of multiculturalism. To put, to put the idea of unity above the idea of blackness, right? And when you put unity above blackness, we are the ones who suffer in America. So I feel like a lot of black Christians, they don't want to talk about the history of Christianity. Oof. I believe that they want to ignore a lot of facts when it comes to Christianity. I believe that they don't want to look at it as a whole, right? So I do believe that a lot of problems do occur from... And that's true. That's true. Because let me tell you, <laughs> I experienced one time at a church, bro, like it was... I forgot what was the name of the guy or whatever, but he said something. He he said somebody was a good man, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And like, I forgot what he said. He said something about him being good or something like that. And <laughs> he and and bro and <laughs> what's up, Quo? <laughs> this man throw me out. This man throw me out. <laughs> Cause you know, you know my thoughts got a process. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, but like he said, like he said something about this man being great or something, and stopped right there when there was a whole entire like like verse, you know, you know, talking about this man, and you know, there's a whole book about him, and he wasn't a good man. 
Like, he did a whole bunch of shit. He did a whole bunch of shit. I think he'd been in wars, like, beheaded people, all type of shit. Like, he he was something crazy until he got saved or some shit like that. And, like, I don't know if the guy was not trying to bring that up, but, like, this guy's correct. Like, some people do do that, too. Like, they try to ignore the bad thing that was in the Bible, and that is definitely true. I left behind Christianity and practice of religion as a whole because of, wait a minute, wait a minute, did it say Leviticus? Leviticus? It, it, I'm sorry if I got that wrong. Which in itself, it is very devised regarding to the interpretation of the text. While I can respect people and let them believe Christianity and the word of God, that respect only extends as far as those who are looking to force the kind of stuff on people. The Westboro Baptist Church being one of the worst examples. Holy. I gotta look that up. I I, I may do some research on that. We talked about religion. I can't. <laughs> oh, damn. But yeah, uh, but yeah, bro, like, we watching black atheists versus uh, black Christians. Can you explain that a little bit further, that difference between... And, by the way, any opinion is free on here, bro. Like, we ain't here to argue. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, if, if you believe what you want to believe, bro, you know, <laughs> just... Uh, I'll just say, you know, let's not disrespect each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, me personally, I say, hey, if you believe it, hey, that's you. If you saw the Lord himself, I can't tell you what you didn't see. You know what I'm saying? Cause just because you saw it, you know? Well, no, just because I didn't see it doesn't mean you didn't see it. So, it's crazy. The, I don't know why I said this crazy, but you know, and not putting blackness ahead of it. I'm so glad you asked that. Jeff. Let's go. <laughs> absolutely, Let's go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I think that um, I think that the George Floyd protests are a perfect, perfect, perfect example to look at. George Tons Floyd. Of unity. Tons of unity when George Floyd died. 2021 record police killings. 2022 record police killings. 2023 record police killings. Oh. When people join our fight, love everybody, be humanitarian. When people join our fight it tends to become about unity, and it tends to become about how uh, not racist America is. And, it, and uh, black issues and black politics tend to get washed away. So I have a lot of black Christians who say, let's accept everybody, Jesus told us to turn the other cheek, but they are killing us, bro. The world, uh, like, like globally, Africans are, are, are being oppressed. It's not a joke. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you're making face. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I made a lot of faces, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really good stuff and I don't even know where to, where to go back and <laughs> address yeah, some of it. It's yeah. really yeah. good stuff. So theology, right, just in a broad sense, is usually defined by either one referring to nature, experiences, tradition, and maybe scripture, right? Just on a broad sense, it could be broken down even further. So I think that when we come to a place as black folks, we come and we lean heavily into our experience, right? And if all of these different sources are places where we would lean, then, we, then our pillars are a little bit out of balance if it's solely based upon what we've been through, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to be a little bit more balanced. When you said that the church hasn't impacted culture, I think the church has, impact, has not impacted what we bring to church. We still hand clap, toe tap, dance, shout, run. Toe tap. Else. <laughs> That's not funny. Churches, right? because That's black funny. Because black culture expresses itself a certain way. What it has done to us, and I agree to your point, is it has limited I'm being that bitch. I get shiesty. Right? Because we have learned to come to church right and check our minds too. at the door and just do church the way it, does, you know, the way it goes. So the young you boy dance. You and shout. You ain't been to church. You ain't seen God. Yeah, so when you, when you described theology, you left out one word, which is evidence. You know, when we think about the rules of how we, how we learn, how we train, how we educate ourselves, in theology, especially within the black church and black theology, we are dismissing evidence. Where is the proof? Well, I think that... And she's right. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to put to death. Their blood would be on their own hands. Heads, holy fuck! Why did bro say it was funny like 19 times? It is crazy. That's insane. If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detest. Holy fuck, bro! That is some crazy shit. Holy hell! That that is crazy. <laughs> well, now I'm not gonna lie. That right there would definitely make a motherfucker be like, you know what, bro? Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> bro, the Bible is fucking targeting me. I can't. It's, it's, oh, Lee.
Back That's to the crazy. Past, you know, the idea that the church really shaped the black culture is really community did because we didn't have spaces. So the only space that we could Coco. exist in with any kind of freedom or away from watchful eyes was being able to worship and practice. That's why we melded a lot of the practices that we had, especially in African uh, religious traditions to Christianity so that we could continue worshiping and having these different traditions continue throughout our community. So black people have always survived and continue to advance and evolve through sticking together. Church just happened to be the place where we could kind of do that without having other people mm. in our business. It was functional. That's cap because let me tell you, if you know these, these black churches, everybody is in your business. Everybody is in your business. Like, I ain't even tell you, I've, <laughs> I've been in these churches, bro. A church can be more messy outside than inside bro it, more no more inside than outside and that's what i meant to say but yeah it is insane like some people go to church just to gospel 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 got got gossip god yeah that's what the word is gossip yeah gossip it, it's crazy let's move on to the next bump we all possess the capacity for compassion and connection and real connection starts with real understanding for example, I don't understand this. Get the fuck out of the conversation. As a black person, people always assume that I'm Christian. That's true. That's really. Mm. It's like, oh, God, God bless you. Have a great day. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. I uh, no. <laughs> Just keep your Damn. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. I uh, no. <laughs> She, she, she thought, bro, she, she, bro, she wearing a chain, bro, she wearing an atheist chain as if she repping that bitch like a gang. Ain't no way she's out there like that. That's insane. She, oh my God. You throwing, oh God damn. That's crazy. That's insane. Bro, I didn't even realize until she just, Point that bitch out. That's oh my god, bro. She throwing, bro. She throwing, G <laughs> she throwing GD down for real, like for real. Oh my god. <laughs> Keep your religion to yourself. It's just a lack of your your own personal bubble, right? You're in your own space. You are thinking that everyone is thinking in accordance to the way that you are. So you need to start expanding your bubble by asking questions, engaging in conversation and then allowing other people to come in and have a conversation with you. That's <laughs> Satanism, not atheism, what the fuck? See, well, you know, she, I mean, she actually could be, but you know, like they bring in anybody who doesn't believe in, you know, Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Which is, you know, atheist. So, you know, all these people actually believe in something different. You know what I'm saying? They either believe in something different or something that's, or probably nothing as well so i live in the bible belt mm. uh, in atlanta georgia and i often get that i look familiar that i have a familiar face she and do like she go to church other black women and almost the the follow-up question is have i seen you in church because that's where i spend all my time and one of the number one questions in the south is what church do you go to <laughs> not even that you whether you're a believer or not it is yeah. the default is what church do you go to? 100%. And, and that is because even according to research, the majority of the black community is Christian and religious, uh, especially in areas of the South where uh, Christianity is extremely prevalent. And that's all that is within their circle. Like right. you said, the bubble. So it is, assumes, it is assumed that everyone thinks the same. Yeah, um, to add to that, uh, my father is actually a pastor mm -hmm. in, um, in Texas right now in the Bible Belt. And um, whenever I uh, just converse with a, with a black person, it's always, God bless you. Oh, I'll pray for you. It's always, um, it's, it's always a, a religious undertone on, under our conversations. I just don't tell people I'm atheist right away, just so I can just keep the peace, because there's just a good 90% of us are, are religious, not even Christians, Muslims, or things like that. And when I say I'm an atheist, or something like that. They a lot. Some people shun me. They'll just say, "Oh, I'll just, pr oh, I'll pray for you." Or they'll. I pray for you. That's the oh, bro. That's I the big line right there. I pray for you. Kind of, kind of vibe sometimes. God and, bless you. Um, 
So do you get that more mostly in between black people or other races say that to you as well? It's majority mostly black, black people. Majority, yeah. yeah. Mostly black do you guys people. find it like an offensive stereotype or is it more so just like? Well, I think that it goes back to the last question and it goes back to how uh, the black church has shaped our culture, yeah. right? I believe that during the civil rights era, of course, you had almost every single civil rights leader being um, Christian. There's tons of gospel music in the hip hop. Yeah. Kanye, Chance the Rapper, so, you know what I'm saying? They're yeah, special chance. Uh, um, sampling it. So I think that um, within black culture, you kind of cannot escape it. Wait, wait, what's up? We over here watching uh, black Christians really versus black really atheists. This question is not necessarily. So feel free to put your, you know, comments am, or what you think, you know like, what I'm saying? I'm gonna um, a little bit, you know what you know, I'm saying? Like, I'll <laughs> hopefully, you know, no friends. one gets disrespectful, like, you know uh, what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, like, like, like parade, you, know, you know, or better yet, have a conversation without, you know, friends. And getting, uh, really you know, crazy, you know, chat, you know, because I'm in some of those. <laughs> but how you been? But even though I'm there, that doesn't mean that I'm less Christian or uh, more Christian or more holier than thou. I'm just in the world. But, yeah. but again, we talked about, and, and I mean, uh, not to just not to bring off what happened off camera, but uh, when we introduced ourselves, you said Amen. I did. That assumed that perhaps uh, that we were going to be in agreement with that. I mean, even though. There were. I'm um, goody. How's life over there? How's your streaming life over there, man? Christianity or mm. some form of belief. Being black and atheist is so rare. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> black and what well, it means? Well, who? Well, man, I want to say it's rare, but at the same time, it's not because I know a lot of people who who are, you know, atheists, but they still go to church. Like, I know some people who don't believe and they still go to church, you know what I'm saying? Just out of family, you know? Oh, boy. It's, it's, uh, um, mm, mm, mm. Uh, Is it real? Oh, no. Like, this is, um, I gotta ask that one day. I gotta ask some people that. Because I know a lot of atheists, you know, black atheists, too. So, like, I definitely gotta ask them about that. That's a good question to ask them. Hmm. That as black folks, that we all share some form. There's of black and atheist sort of isn't rare community. in this generation. Yeah, one, yeah sure. like I would say definitely in the generation. Yeah, Mandisa, beautiful name by the way. Thank you. I'm just gonna say this, like that has less to do about my assumptions about you and just more about the way that I personally talk. Yeah. So like even if I'm like around like an atheist or whatever, like it's not really a personal thing or an assumption for me to be like, amen, because that's just how I talk. You know what I'm saying? Oh. If I have a Muslim friend who's around me and they want to say mashallah, they, I don't, I don't think that they're trying to offend me just yeah. because they have a different religious belief than me. And I, I say, I mean, amen that's facts a whole too. Lot. That's so facts I'm guilty too. of that too. Yeah. But it, it isn't a thing to say like God bless you. Amen simply means I agree, you know, yes. or we are in agreement, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean God, this, that, the other. So to me, it's like if I agree with something, it's like yeah, amen, whatever. But it's not to offend to say oh we're all Christians and this, that, the other. That's just the way I speak. But should that now? Um, prompt you to think about why, why it is that we that? do what we no. do. Mm -hmm. Why not though? I because mean if, if you're if you're in community with other people and they may not share the same practices or they may not share the same customs as mm -hmm. you do, is it possible to perhaps think that that might not be the most appropriate thing to say at the time? No, because we live in a culture that is very much about relativism and your relative truth and being who you are and standing True. in that. And what you're asking me to do is not stand on who I am. It's not about personifying what someone says that's just a greeting or a passing or a, or a, a statement of agreement. Mm -hmm. It's not wrapped in that. And if, if everyone else in this culture gets to stand in their relative truth, be who they want to be, you know, say who you are, then I should be able to do that too without thinking that I'm offended. Sure. But we're really not. As Americans, we're, you know, yes, we're black Americans, but they don't really want any of us to have individuality. Ultimately, it's like, get up, go to work, do your labor, come home, don't question anything. It's 2024, anything. why would you be living in that reality though of oppression? It's 2024. We because so many people are still open. But I mean, but and that's a mindset thing, right? Because no, I, no, it's not. I wouldn't say that it's any of us, with our strong thing. personalities, each one of us on this stage, live in a, a mindset of I feel so oppressed because I'm black. What I'm going to do? I'm black. <laughs> but we get up and we're going to do what we have to do. We're going to go for what we want, regardless of our spiritual beliefs. I don't. I don't think that that's a that's an argument to stand Correct on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you saying that's like a victim mentality? I do. Yeah. Do you yeah. involve yourself in yeah. the Black Power movement? 
what do you what do you mean by that though? Do you involve yourself in the black power movement? What does that mean? Because well, there are there are essentially issues. Essentially, do you prioritize black politics and the black community? I prioritize politics that I believe okay, in. Okay, so that's why so you feel that way. That's why you feel really, like it's not really because there are black politicians no, that I agree with no. in anything. You cannot dim diminish what I'm saying on no, that. No, 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 no. I'm not diminishing what you're saying, right? But you said something objectively. Mm -hmm. Right, you said that that is a victim mindset, mm -hmm. and it's not. And if no. you educate yourself on the Black Power movement and what is going on with Africans globally, you wouldn't have that mindset, right? I think that I actually wanted to bring the conversation to a little bit of a personal experience. I remember a time when I was in eighth grade. I was speaking to my uh, social even athlete teacher. behind me. was Mr. Father, that and I told him Paul I was Christian, readers. and he was oh, like, "Oh, definitely oh, that oh, that's too. Cool. What kind of Christian are you?" Who you? I was like, on people, Baptist? insecurity, vulnerable Baptist? state for the sake of financial gain." And he was like, "You know what, Tyler? You're probably one of the loudest." Right? Uh, and then I was like, the kind of we, we are loud. No, 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 I know. <laughs> I accepted oh, that wow. immediately. Like, I agree with that. I know, first, like, I know um, some people actually like that. Interactions with microaggressions. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And religious microaggressions are pretty rare as well. Right. Right. I and I think really that um, the parallels between how toxic it can get two. when you come across other Christians, even Shit, I don't know an Afro Greek, to be honest. Right? I feel like I feel like I can tell a beautiful black person who just became my friend that I missed the bus or my phone is off. And they're like, the devil's after you, pray. And it's like, <laughs> bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed my paycheck. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. We have always had that type of situation where like something would be going bad or like, man, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, today not a good day and you know they'd be like man you know just pray about it you know don't let the devil be on you like that or you know you know the devil trying to get you trying to ruin you and and i'm like ma'am i didn't get enough sleep last night that's all i did i don't think it's that deep you know what i'm saying i i, I don't know man like i i think it's just sleep you know i i like the sleep the sleepiness how do you like, <laughs> like, it's like it's like what are we talking about here okay the atheist side is this side right here the 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 right side is the atheist and the left side is the uh the want this christian cuz let me show you let me tell you hold up let me point the camera oh we got we got a good shot right there hold up hold up damn i had a good shot of her hold up fuck i just had a good shot of her god damn Oh, we had, we had, we had, we had it. If you look at this right here, what is, oh shit, you can't see it. If you look at this woman's shirt, <laughs> if you look at this woman's shirt, you would definitely tell which one is the atheist here. <laughs> Cause she, she repping that bitch like it's a gang, bro. She said, G-O-D down, atheist. <laughs> She out here gang banging, bro. She gang banging her religion, bro. For real, <laughs> she ain't playing. Right, and I think that um, the parallels between how toxic it can get when you come across other Christians, even in the black community, is the same way. Yeah. Right, I feel like politics that I believe. Okay, in so that's why you. I think that I actually wanted to um, interactions with microaggressions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I baptized am I Baptist? <laughs> and he, what do you mean? We are loud. And I was like. Baptist? I got, I think that. You cannot dim diminish what I'm saying on no, that. speaking to my uh, social studies teacher, his name was Mr. Father, and I told him I was Christian, and he was like, oh, oh, that's cool, what kind of Christian are you? That's not even atheist like, though, girl rapping Baptist? another religion, yeah. Is my Baptist? She, 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 she like, rapping that motherfucker, like, you know Satanism, Satanism. Right? And then I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? We are loud. No, 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 I know. <laughs> I accepted that immediately. Like, and that was kind of yeah. one of my first, um, interactions with microaggressions, yeah. right? Yeah. And religious microaggressions, yep. right? right. And I think that um, the parallels between how toxic it can get when you come across other Christians, even in the black community is the same way, yeah. right? I feel, like, I feel like I can tell a beautiful black person who just became my friend that I missed the bus or my phone is off. And they're like, the devil's after you, pray. And it's like, <laughs> bro, yeah. no, yeah. Yeah. no, yeah. I missed my paycheck. How do you <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what are we talking about here? And a lot of family members hit me up and they're like, Yo, Tyler, I need your help. The devil's after me. And after we breathe and we calm down, it's like if we put these problems on paper, it has nothing to do with spirituality at all. Yeah. It has to do a lot with preparation, yes. right? Yeah. Mindfulness, yeah. right? Yeah. And 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 just financial planning. Yeah. That's, so, I want to yeah. go back to something real quick. Yeah. And and that's again, it's the, the these narratives, right? Where you ask me, do you believe in the black empowerment movement? It's such a broad thing because you still have not told me anything specific, even though that was beautiful what you what yeah. you shared. 
you are painting every black person as a monolith. No, I'm not. Yes, when you ask those questions, because I, as a black person, I'm expected to vote a certain way because I'm a woman. I'm, I'm not lying. She, she's getting way. irritated, and too. And it, it, it gives no room, and it denigrates each of us as an individual and what we think. And I think that's mm -hmm. where the problem is. It's like, I can Hold care on. about black issues, yeah. but we may not care about the same exact things or see things differently, but it doesn't make me any less black than you. What was your name? Roxy. Roxy. Let me ask you a question, Roxy, <laughs> right? Because because you articulate yourself very well. And I'm not here to um, to uh, to make you qualify your blackness or to question for, uh, your blackness. That's not what I'm here at all, right? So when do you think that the concept of blackness first uh, came into the minds of African people? I'm not here for that kind of discussion because okay. that's not my expertise. Well, so, okay, perfect. Hold on, perfect. Do you want to answer? You don't want to answer? You, you don't want to answer? I don't want to answer. And that's also another have... problem I have with Christians when it comes to free thinking. I don't It's like have, a lot of ducking and dodging. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but let me answer that for <laughs> no, that's right? You know what? And, and, and that is true because like when they know they in a trap, in a frame trap, bro, and when they know they in a trap or they knew they contradicted themselves, bro, they they will go into this duck and dodge into a question that they know they jump into. They're they like they they <laughs> they got no choice but to be mad. It is it, it's crazy, and he's right about that. I ain't gonna take that from an old buddy. That he he he's facts on that, facts on that. Holy! So the first time that this concept of unity through blackness, I believe, uh, proliferated through Africans' minds, was when diverse Africans from West Africa were shackled together on slave ships and they couldn't speak to each other, Yeah. right? They could yeah. not speak to each other, right? But there were things that they noticed, right? And what they noticed is our hair is a certain way mm -hmm. and our skin color is a certain way, right? The people who are doing this to us, their skin color is a different way. So when they couldn't speak and they had no cultural relevance was when blackness became was important mm -hmm. and was when black people needed to put blackness above everything else. I personally believe that black people all around the world, when it comes to intersectionality, I believe that they need to put race before anything else. You predate Jesus, you predate Muhammad, you predate as an African woman, every biblical figure that walked this earth, right? So what's more of a divine command? You being black or you being Christian? And here's where I get upset, right? Because we talk about how, oh, um, I don't wanna be this, a part of this black culture movement, this, that, and the third, and, and all these different things, and I wanna explore my own experience as a black person, and da 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 And then you go to church, black church, and then there's white Jesus all over the wall, yeah, right? And then you talk, to, you talk to black people and be like, what color is God? Oh, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't oh. matter what color God is, right? Oh. But it does matter if you are a woman or a man of the cloth. How does that not matter to your book? Because in the Bible, oh, let's, let me ask you that. In the Bible, let me finish this off with this, right? In the Bible, <laughs> he, he, he's Jesus, getting the shit um, off. Is his appearance in the Bible? Uh, I believe they describe him with like his feet were bronze hair. and hair was bronze. yeah. His feet was black as brass and his hair was that of wool. James Harden? <laughs> <laughs> James Harden? LeBron? James? What? <laughs> James Harden is in the Bible? The black church is better than the white church. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> hey, buddy was getting his shit off. <laughs> he was getting his shit off. He was like, "Bro, let me get this out, or else I can't do it again." Oh, Lee. yeah, he <laughs> he won that round, buddy. And I'm going to oh, Lee. to watch this exclusive prompt. The churches help black people more than the government. <clears throat> You hesitate a little bit. Yeah, totally, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because it's like a, a two-headed sword, right? Okay. Because church is some place that we can go, gather. It is very helpful to the community in the sense of we can be there together. We can have conversations with one another. At one point during slavery, it may be the only place you can see your family or connect with one another. A lot of churches can help build different programs. Wait a minute. The church has helped black people more than the government. Man. Like, I guess they don't agree back there, but damn, I would like the insight on it. Like, it's like all the atheists is, 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 is actually, you know, sitting down trying to discuss about it, you know? But I think, again, it comes back to that word of, like, wanting to assemble someplace, wanting to be with people that look like you. And a lot of the church movement did have to force the government's hand of, like, all right, we need civil rights. So that was kind yeah, of birthed and, you true. know, pushed through in that way. So no, I don't trust the government and I don't think the government is here to help black people. I don't think the government is here to help really any poor people. Yeah. And a lot of black people unfortunately are disenfranchised. So 
This is interesting that all the atheists step forward. I was just saying it. I was just saying it. See, see, I need to be a host. I need to be a fucking host. I did. See, that's see, that's my see y'all. See, I don't care what nobody say. That that is the Lord telling me that I need to be a host. Okay, then, because that guy right there, he felt me. The Lord Savior Himself came down to my back and said, "Senpai Kadi." I can see you being a host. And he spoke exactly what I w said. Bar for bar, word for word. History. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord and Savior. Thank you. After yeah. slavery and reconstruction, yeah. right? So Y'all can't debug what he's saying. Like, for real, you can't. Congress, you know, there, was black, there was black progress. However, uh, once reconstruction In all fairness, ended, the church and there were never distributed crack were across the U.S., so at least there's that. Yeah, 100%. Black, black folks. Mm -hmm. um, there were many churches in the religious community that helped support um, in times when, you know, black folks couldn't get good jobs, who could not get, uh, a, you know, a good education, even though there were historically black colleges and universities. I, I do tend to give the church its credit at times. Mm -hmm. And again, that doesn't mean, you know, the, the black church gets to define Especially how they the black community answer this question. in its entirety. Just by looking at the title, that's bullshit. all of us that way. But uh, we have to give credit historically where it's due. Do. The U.S. government has had a lot of policies to if keep African I feel if you're down, atheist, you have an open mind more than anything. And even before, so you also had um, yeah, because at that point, if you fight against you know what you was uh, poor born in, you know, like you have some type of free thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these things, like you all these jumped, you know, you mentally jumped out of that box. You know what I'm saying? US government in so you have some type of free thinking. States. But the one place that where black people we can come and, and it may not even be right, the but the fact that you can think, you know, and actually and get yeah, information, yes. so put yourself in another perspective, you, you know, like atheists who st stood up for this one. For sure, is do you guys view it as more of a lesser than two evil situation where you guys just really distrust the government? So why you guys have created this prompt? How would you answer that? Oh. See, even the way that you worded the question, the lesser of two evils, because evil is a word that gets. Really I, I meant that in around. just like a phrase. No, I know, right? I know, just but I, it, yeah. I'm just saying the underlying tones of just like the American community and therefore it's projecting as domination throughout the world. Yeah. Right? Let's say the lesser two entities in yeah. this instance. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the church itself, it's about what it doesn't do. It's not about how it hurts the community. It's about what it doesn't do, not what it does do, yeah. right? So I think that was no one in here is a proper Christian because you're not even meant to be arguing about Christianity as a Christian. Way on the ass for that. <laughs> we get cracks and guns. Y'all having things, this discussion? Right? So I mean, y'all he's not real Christians. Um, what are y'all talking about? The black church historically has done its jobs, organized our movements. Without the black church, we would not be here today. Let's 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 get that straight, right? They were very important, but today they don't have the same value historically. And the government, just um, after the George Floyd protests, the two major bills that were passed, even though they passed a thousand oversight bills for police, uh, police brutality, the main bills that they passed was, I believe, an Asian hate bill and an LGBTQ hate bill. <laughs> so I don't think that the government is necessarily, I believe that it's too overstretched. And also, let's um, let's let's take it to the reparations um, discussion. Yeah. About how there were supposed to be reparations after yeah. slavery. Yeah. I still want my forty, 40 acres in the middle. One hundred percent, mine too, bro. That's like five yeah. billion right now. I need that yeah. <laughs> through the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. So we can. I need my horse, bro. Point to that, and we are still. Having it's not a meal no more, bro. It's a fucking, fucking Lamborghini now. Having now yeah. that the federal government could have yes. resolved yes. a while, exactly. long time let's, ago. And still hold, could. Let's, let's hold. Yes. Um, let's bring the disagreeers. Oh shit! Here we go. What do you want like to start? Yeah, I'm a little bit neutral when it comes to this standpoint because I feel that there was a lot of redlining. You brought up such a great point. When I was exposed to the amount of redlining that the government had imposed on black communities, minority communities, especially what's happening up in San Francisco right now, up in New York, it was it was bizarre. Um, and that had pushed a lot of Christian churches, a lot of churches in, in general, to open up assistant living, open up um, Food uh, shelter. I need my land, shelters, my car, my island, everything. Yeah, bro. Like, we, man, time, I need it all, bro. I'm trying to take a piece of Bahamas. And look at legislators and their mayors to also make uh, movements and propositions to do that. So it's kind of like this fine line between both. I don't trust the government. I don't trust 
also completely like people who run the church because they're not all good people. They're not all good people that who we elect as well into um, our branches and legislator government. The church isn't a minority so community though. There's this neutrality that I'm sitting True. between with because is it really going to benefit or are these just propositions to just just temporarily save someone's butt and then go on to the next and then just continue to like put the bandaid on the big scar? I, I ask myself why didn't I walk up in, in favor of the church doing more and at the risk of giving any ammo for the other side, <laughs> no, <laughs> at the risk, I, I think I look at the church um, with a very critical eye. I think that I, um, I'm troubled by what we do and what we don't do. I'm troubled by how we do some of the stuff that we do and we miss the bigger pictures, right? And, and so I, for that reason, I had to I had to just hold back and say, I don't think that we're doing all that we should be doing. Sorry to interrupt, but what are some specific examples of that? I, I think that we've gotten into this Western world mentality where church now is, is gimmicky. Yes. I think that it's about um, becoming so seeker friendly. Yes. Um, and we, we, we play to certain audiences, we play to certain things. Um, we code switch organizationally, if, if you, you know, can believe that. Yep. Uh, you can have a church over here where everybody is praying for healing, but everybody's broke. This church over here is a church of prosperity. This church over here is a church of tongue talking. So you've got these different characteristics that if there's no balanced theological view of it, and so I think the church runs the risk of showing up in Just go to Catholic Church, easy. <laughs> some of the conversations that we need to have. I, How much I, money does your church make a year? This is important. How much money does your church make? Oh, shit. He I asked the real question. I have that number at the top of my mind. I wasn't coming to talk about the budget. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's very important. The reason why I bring it up is because we're talking about what the black community, uh, what the black church does for the community, right? And if you are taking money from, uh, from the black participants who go to your church, you should know how much money you're taking from the community, especially since the community uh, isn't financially stable. Yeah. But also churches that make over $100,000 per year should do exactly what the black church used to do during the civil rights era. So, I think, I think so, that's a harsh so criticism. I think, it's a, I think it's a huge assumption. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Finish. So, so churches that do make over $150,000 a year, they need to invest that money in the black institutions. Yeah. With all due respect, wait, wait, $150,000. I do want to hear from More than $150,000, 100%. You can start a bank with that. How would you respond? I think we have to be careful about drawing assumptions of what churches do. I was making a very broad commentary about how I see churches behave, but don't get me wrong, there are a lot of churches that are doing exactly what you just said they should be doing. Turkeys like, and shoes aren't enough. Well, for our well, well <laughs> see, I can't get into that part of it because turkeys <laughs> and shoes are not the conversation I'm having. I'm having a conversation about a methodology to reach a people and be a service to a community. I'm talking about down payment assistance so that black folks can own homes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about doing financial stewardship education courses. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, counseling and support That's systems all I hear for right family there. and standing in the gap for mothers with single, the, the single mothers with children, and making sure that they have mentors for their sons and their daughters. 100% right there. I'm talking about programs that actually affect folks' lives. Yeah. But yeah. meanwhile, you're on a different page, and I get that. I get that, but I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't brush that very broad because there are a lot of ministries that are doing it. What I'm looking at is the impact of the way this division amongst the body of Christ actually shows up in the world. I think it shows up a little bit less impotent than it should. And on, my, on, on behalf of the body of Christ, I apologize that you've seen that more than you've seen the effective work. Is that fair? No, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not fair. And once again, once we, uh, when you dive into this with Christians, I, I, I often feel that there's this, this neglect for politics. Jesus was a fighter. Jesus was a fighter. He was He's not anti-capitalist. He was not pacifist. He was right. anti-capitalist, right? So, so, so all what you're saying is very good, and I respect the fact that you are a leader, right, and that you do own your own black church, right? But there needs to be more. I, I, I don't want you just meeting with mothers, right? If my grandma is, is funding her own displacement every single time right. she donates to the church and they put their money at Chase Bank. Yeah. You understand that, right? Well, I guess like what specifically would you like? What's the more happen? that you're looking for within yeah. the church's I need, for the black community? I need, I, need the, I need the church to put their race, I need all black Christians to put their race either on the same level or, a, or above Christianity politically, not socially, politically, yeah. right? We need to, as a pastor, you need to preach that the church needs institutions. Otherwise, every single time that our grandmas go and pay tithes, they are funding their own displacement. How is that better than white supremacy, though, if you're asking us to be supremacists about being black people? 
Huh? Who said anything? Well, you got it. You, 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 you said like, like, anything. Who said anything? I know what you're about to say. <laughs> However, you, you have brought up white supremacy several times, but now you're saying put your blackness about, above everything. Black is the only way yes. to think about it. And that's, yes. that is yes. a supremacy if, in and of itself, no, it's which I can respect your, your, your opinion on that, mm -hmm. but I don't operate just because of my blackness. There's so much more to me as a human, a woman, yes. and other things. An American, yes. like there are things that are intersecting about me as a person in this world that's not just everything has to be about my race mm -hmm. and I have a problem with that in just I that, swear that he did I know, swear he wanted to call us something must be seen through the eyes of being black and if you don't you get your black card well I think it's what he's crazy. trying to say let is, me answer it yeah, go ahead so I never told he, you he's feeling like I'm not done to make anybody else feel inferior by the way of their race so no no, I'm not spreading black supremacy. And I find it often that racist white people and black people in the church love to call me racist, bro. I'm not even- Love to call me racist and a supremacy. I'm not what, what, what the church, though. Let's, That's the thing. I'm yeah. not the Wait, hold on, church hold on, hold on. in the way that you're clarify. trying to let label me. Let him clarify. Me. Let him clarify. Yes. So what I'm saying is that if you are a part of the black power movement and if you are conscious of what goes on in the black community, then there is no way in hell that you will put being gay over being black, you will put being a Christian over being black, you will put being a woman over being black. You, the, you can get disabled. You can get disabled. But that's about it. That's about it. But there have, is no reason in the world. You have black people entire identities on their sexuality and being gay as well. So what about that? The reason why. You don't have why, a problem with that because if they're not Christian, then it's okay to be gay and black, right? It depends on how you oh, align yourself depends. politically. I just yeah. said you guys it can depends. be Christian. You but guys can but be Christian, but you need to prioritize blackness. Is, isn't our existence more than our political stance? That's force-fed to you, brother, no, to no, be no, 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 it's my belief. It's well thought out. I believe that who I am as a person has is, is very much more broader than what you're describing. Now, they get to the nitty-gritty right? right here. I they get to the nitty-gritty. I, I just do. Now, am I for <laughs> the cause and the advancement of black folks? Absolutely. How? Glo globally. How? I, I'm not here to prove my blackness to you. I'm no, here to talk about, I'm talking about the difference, the chasm between you and I with yes. a belief system and what I'm saying is while I respect you you got to respect me for this conversation to be fluid Absolutely. right because I'm not challenging you or, or diminishing what you believe I'm listening to you and I understand your come from but the only way we experience another, another culture is that we explore our commonalities so I get your passion I get your passion, and I, de I definitely do the work in our community. And if you're suggesting that we should probably do other work, then let's have that conversation. Because having a conversation that makes me feel like I need to surrender my black card is a conversation that gives us more of a chasm, so we never get there together. Why in the that face of pro-blackness? Why in the face of pro-blackness, everyone else's blackness feels diminished? That's insane to me. No, because it's the That's what I'm it's saying is that a portion, what you say. a portion, a portion of your energy and time needs to politically go into black institutions and black politics in order for us to get a foothold in the Says country. you, but no, you're not an authority uh, for no. me. You're not an right. authority no, my for brother says black folks. Folks. science. No, 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 political science step, isn't let's my take authority. A step back because I think we're getting too wrapped up actually in the black part of it right now. And I think ultimately yes. I understand a lot of what you're saying and you're specifically talking about capitalism, right? No. And how it affects black people. <laughs> no, no, so no. We're talking about putting blackness above everything. No. <laughs> Do you guys feel like, um, do you guys feel like, she uh, got black lost in the sun <laughs> and in America? Okay. So, so, so we all have that kind of She wasn't understanding so, shit was going on. Sister, uh, <laughs> right? The only way for us to do system racism is for us to get institutions of our own, right? The only way oh, for us to shit. get out of this oppression Let me right, not is for us to stop playing around with everyone Let me else's not beliefs and ideologies. <laughs> and focus on an Afrocentric belief. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Hey, you if Ozzy was here, I was like, what? Love everyone. <laughs> what is she saying? <laughs> what are you talking about? Intersectionality that you would like to be, right? But if you support Israel and Gaza, if you're uh, putting that on your story, then I need you to put the Congo on there as well. Yeah. I well, need you to put Haiti on there as well. Do you know well. how many black Catholics are being murdered by other black Africans in Nigeria Thank right you. now. So it let's is, talk but, but, about no, that. but you but you haven't said anything about this. It's all about what's going on in the blackness. You, the, the, you're assuming that we don't think about these things. Mm -hmm. I think about these things. I know I'm highly aware of them. I'm highly sensitive. So it's not fair for you to say that just because we're black Christians or we're black American Christians or whatever that we don't think about these things. We do. We might see things in a different way or a different you know way just, of, of solution. But it doesn't mean that we're people, not there. We, we don't think it's important. I just Last feel as thoughts. black. Yeah. I just feel as black people in our community, we put an overly emphasis. Not gonna on lie, I forgot Darius was there. 
and on yeah. the church. And like, and in, in a lot of poor black communities, you'll see a bunch of churches, but you know what you won't see? You won't see a bank. You won't see a, a hospital. Store. You won't even see a grocery store with like good food. You know, you go to a liquor store or something, there's an era behind the liquor store. There's yeah. people that don't look like us. These are issues that aren't even addressed by the church. It's like, they, like sometimes I feel, I go to a church, they don't right, even black care Christians sometimes. in Nigeria, yeah, you know, they just want facts. more members. That's big facts, you know? and 100%. as a person who grew up in the black community and grew up in a, in, a, in a black church, I understood these problems even when I was young. You know, so these are things, these are problems that us as black people need to come together and figure out and stop building so many churches in our community. 100%. How many Ebenezer Baptist churches are there? Right. You know and what I'm right saying? We don't need you, that. You, we need, yeah. If you're going Last to walk time. as Christians and have the black church, there, there should be, we should be helping the poor, we should be helping the orphans, we should be helping the widow, we should be helping the single mothers, we should be helping the disenfranchised, and that is a part of Christianity. And the fact that that is not happening, I totally agree that that is a, that is a problem. So we are absolutely on the same page about that. I have considered exploring other religions or leaving the church. Whoa, man. This is a lot, man. Like, <laughs> this is, man, this is like, I, I'm not gonna lie. I thought this shit was gonna be kind of boring, but man, like, you know, if, 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 <laughs> if you know what's going on, you know what I'm saying, you won't get lost in the sauce. But, uh, that woman talking about, you talking about capitalism, right? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I have left the church because I grew up in it. It wasn't for me. I, especially once I became a high schooler, started hanging out with different crowds of people and seeing how different people lived, expanding your bubble. And I had my first um, friend that identified as being LGBTQ. And my parents did not like that, couldn't, didn't want me hanging around this person. And it was strictly because they believed that because they were homosexual, they were going to lead me into a life of sin and that person's going to die and go to hell and be punished just yeah. because of their lifestyle. And then I was already questioning, even when I was a little kid, things about the church. And because of that one fact, I was like, I can't keep doing this. I need to be somewhere where people feel accepted because if it's something with some sexuality, then I can go to another church. It could be something with my blackness or being a woman or something else. There's always going to be some dividing factor. I also went through a lot of trauma. I had lost like three people that I loved all like in a row. Um, and the question kept coming up of, yeah, what does happen to us after we die? I don't just think that it's a heaven and a hell. There has to be something more than this. Yeah. And when I brought up these questions within the church, I was really like shunned for it, pushed away, um, or people just didn't have an answer for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, I began to see that fear even within mm -hmm. my own parents because they didn't want to question their belief. That's a cornerstone for them. That's their comfort. That's crazy. Like being me, um, being in America seems hard. Wait, 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 where are you from? My, uh, early years of, of faith. My parents went through a really nasty divorce um, so much that it had scarred my mom that she has walked away from religion in general. She has walked away from God and um, doesn't, doesn't go to church. I think my brothers have seen that yeah. and they are now grown young adults and they don't uh, believe in that as well. Um, and there was a low point in my life where I tried to reach out to people and I just wasn't getting the answers. I wasn't understanding uh, my purpose and my reason in life where I was second guessing my existence. Naturally, we are curious beings. And so I was just naturally diving deeper into it. Ireland, oh, let's go. Understanding, like, why am I going through what I'm I think, going through? And I think, I think, I think I got some Ireland people there. You know what I'm saying? It's the free you know what I'm saying? It's saying. just corrupted in, in humanity um, that I have no control over. But there's still choices that I can make that can overcome the challenges that I'm going through. Um, so that's personally and with the church that like, yeah, I've experienced. I left life. the Catholic Church. I left it. And what I didn't leave was a, was a central belief in God. Mm. So I was more agnostic than I was Christian Catholic. And the reason why I left it was because of the rhetoric that I constantly heard. I was in a, I grew up in a protected bubble, okay? I grew up in the Catholic church. I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. I went to Fordham University, a Jesuit Catholic college, right? But for me, it was more of that question of how dare you as a black person believe in white Jesus. So I, for myself, okay, show me what you got. I went through Islam. I even went to the five percenters, okay? Yeah, Had the, I yeah, you're, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the Israelites, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Buddhism, oh, okay. And I even went to the black church because I figured if I'm gonna be Christian, I'm black. Why are you a Catholic? Go to the black church. So 
my favorite place to go outside of the Catholic Church is West Angeles, honey. Okay, I'll be in there. That is my spot. But what changed for me? How did I get back to Catholicism? Well, we all believe in communion as Christians. It's that, that's something that we, we hold for ourselves. And when we had communion at West Angeles, this is where we have some divide between all of us, right, as Christians. The presence of Christ in the Eucharist is something that for me was a real thing that I cannot let go because of what he told us scripturally. So I think for me, my experience, even though I left, I was in apostasy for a while, I have an appreciation for whatever, and a respect for whatever it is that you feel you are called to, so. Do you think this human experience of religion is due to the discomfort of death that humans have? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, but, yeah. but for, for Christians, Christianity, we are not afraid of death. Mm -hmm. We look forward to death. I am looking forward to the death. <laughs> She's death. like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> She's like, no, -uh, I want to live this life forever. Let me finish that. Let me finish that. My father died. <laughs> my father died the day before my birthday last year. Mm. It was a shock to me. But for me, I know where my father is as a man who believed in God to the Just day he died. Just believe in what you want, boom, 100%. If you believe belief, in pasta, aliens, or something, like, bro, I believe in yeah. I think as an, as an atheist, I'm even, I'm scared of the concept of death or like the process of dying because it is such an unknown. I, I, I try to spend more of my time thinking about what I'm doing while I'm alive so that when that time does come, um, you know, one thing I've always said is that the, the only life after our deaths are the legacies we create while we're here. Mm -hmm. That's what lives on, whether it is, whether it is good or bad. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the, the concept of death, yeah, I mean, or like the process, it still scares me. I, I'm more curious. That there's a reason, I think that there's a reason for that. I, I don't think death is supposed to happen to us. Mm -hmm. At, like, yeah. As a Christian, all of us humans, we have this visceral reaction to it because that's not how things were supposed to be. If we go back to the garden and, the and all those things, it's, 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 the sin it's the sin nature of humanity, you know? I have more of a curiosity and excitement for once it happens, because to me, this is hell. Like being a, a spirit stuck in a body <laughs> on this planet with all these people being super decisive. I think the only reason they get me to come back down here is like, you can eat food again. <laughs> you can go to Paris. In, in a way that we, I think that there's a difference between saying like, I appreciate death and the concept of death and, and, and what it is, then saying like, I actually want to die. I feel like right. like everybody, mm -hmm. nobody wants to die. Right. Yeah. But yeah. like, right. yeah. we can still sit but here But I mean, and if you're in pain, what, yeah. what, what are your thoughts well, on that? I never really thought about joining another religion because I was born and raised in the church mm -hmm. and very strict into the church. You know what I mean? Like I went to church every day. You know, black church, you're there all day. It wasn't until I, I joined the military and I had a black friend who was an atheist and I've never met a black atheist ever in my life. And he, you know, he planted little seeds, you know, and he was like, Darius, you were born and raised to believe this. This is all you know. You were beaten with this Bible and they tell you that it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Even though there's really no evidence of God actually really existing. I started to think about the concept of hell and good and evil. And I started to go through life situations and realize a lot of things aren't black and white at all. No. And you know, you can devote your life to a God and go to church every Sunday and pray and do everything and you can find something in heaven. That's a good comforting thought. You know, and but the reality <laughs> is, there's no proof of any of it. Blaze Pascal, well, actually, you know, I, want, I want to put a, let, a let cherry on that. Let him okay. talk. <clears throat> Me personally, I went to church. Damn, until it was a devil that spoke to me. Right. The so devil. Was, the devil. Right. My ass was in the, the devil was like, man, from, from put that young, book down, man. You know, uh, <laughs> put that book down. School, they just telling you, like, bro. Like, that's what it sounds like. I ain't got. The devil got to him, y'all. The devil got to him. And I was able to kind of um, get away from my family and get into being really into the uh, black power struggle, right? And I found myself um, identifying with my community. Right. And so when I realized black Christians that I came across were more obsessed with people being gay in the church, mm -hmm. was more obsessed with what the images of Jesus look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they had no time essentially for um, the things that I believe will help our community. And so I started to dive into different religions. Mm -hmm. The first religion that I dove into was Islam. Right, because I remember going to Harlem and seeing black Israelites mm -hmm. on the streets, right. Yeah. right? And those were the first people who cultivated a sense of blackness in me, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 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 and, and it wasn't embarrassing, but then I realized that there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of toxicity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I started to go to Eastern religions and things like that. And eventually I decided to connect my conscious being 
right, with my mental being. That's what left me African spirituality, and it was everything that I personally um, needed, right, in order for me to um, continue to engage with everyone like I love them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of hate. There, there's a lot of hate on the underside of religion. Mm-hmm. So there is a French philosopher, his name is Blaise Pascal, and he has something called Pascal's Wager. <coughs> and I think that you can, you can relate to this, regardless of your faith belief, he says right, here that we, go. we got mixed Roxy here. You can make the choice that it's for yourself that it's better to believe in a god that there's something at least that there's something Sorry Sean that's not on the reaction tab bro because you're cringe everybody having a great time Can y'all so point and laugh at Sean to spam L's in the chat he tried to get a fart off and it didn't with care, L. Right? helping those L, 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 L. and to be rewarded at yeah. the end of the L. day that there is a L. God, but if there is no God, L. guess what? You still you put left another one. a legacy of hope on uh, the planet. But that fucking Whether works. Ah! Yeah. That's how I think That's we see That's the whole <laughs> what if you're wrong. Point and laugh at Sean. Point and laugh at Sean. Not at me. Something but you're still, you're not at me. There it is. There is, that's like an insurance policy for something that you still do not know exists. And that's, we hear that from can, a lot of Christians, you, the whole Can you, whole can you explain wager. everything? Because I, I'm cannot, not trying to explain everything. You can't explain everything, everything of the world but, either, you know, but, but you understand going, science. Uh, but let's let her talk. Yeah. Yes. I'm so, um, yeah, so this is the, year that assumes once again, that if you don't believe in God, that you're not good. That doesn't and say that. that. Yes, Wait, it, that, but uh, it's that's fundamental exactly. to our, but sorry to cut you off, mm-hmm. but I, I feel a lot of this, like this, this belief that says that like, oh, you're not good if you don't believe in God. Christians believe that they're not good without God either. Like we're, none, of us are, none of us are good in our, in our own right. So to say that like, oh, Christians now have a pedestal to stand up and say like, hey, I'm better than you now. No, That's you're not. It's God, God, no, no. Listen, <laughs> they're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> they're wrong. is inherently racist. <laughs> she said, fuck it, yeah, I'm gonna sit. I look at it from a legal perspective as uh, Christianity, as it has been, it was built into law mm-hmm. in the United States to classify the, the enslaved captives that came over, that were brought over, transported over from the continent of Africa and used to justify the enslavement as well as the mistreatment of, of darker skinned people mm-hmm. um, using the curse of Ham that is in the Bible, mm-hmm. even though the description of Jesus himself was not white as is depicted in, 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 in popular culture. But the Christianity as we know it today and the distinct differences between um, certain non, non-black non people and, and black folks and other people of color and the conditions of our community certainly imply that it is, it is racist. Even within the Old Testament, you're looking at these different groups of people, different. I mean, she's not pinning it on like Christianity and, as a whole, but definitely the people, you know, who believed out. in Christianity so, yeah, back then. Because my boy, my boy, you just don't it. know. <laughs> boy, they stuff. I think this is an interesting say, point. Say, in the I Bible, you supposed to be a slave. You supposed to be a slave. You know what I'm saying? They used to do that. Like, bro, they used to do that shit back in the day. To suppress people and oppress people and enslave people. Mm -hmm. So I I absolutely do. They say, here in the Bible, Um, you, it says here, slave. Slavery in the Atlantic (laughs) slave trade also gets very sticky because you also had African slaves and tribes who were betraying their own people to give them away to these colonizers and more. So, I mean, it's like there's so much murkiness in that entire conversation that it's like one side over the other who's the lesser of two evils kind of thing, right? Those who, who are enslaving plus those who slowed their, their families to the slavery, you know? Well, there, there were a number of um, captives that were kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Um, they, so they weren't necessarily given over. It, it, like you said, it does, it, it does become a very, very murky and very ugly history overall. And so I, I definitely agree that, uh, but yes, the justification, especially through the Catholic Church mm-hmm. in one of the papal bulls, which actually endorsed the transatlantic slave trade. That is historic, that is a fact. Right, right. And mm-hmm. so we have to, you know, we, we cannot ignore that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's, that's, that's a good point mm-hmm. because even as Christians, regardless of our denominations, we have to look at the ugly parts and stand in it and admit it. And stand on it. We're wrong and this happened, not try to excuse it. Right. So I don't disagree with you on that. Right. There are some really ugly things that the Catholic Church certainly did. 
and I don't deny that. And the only thing that I would deny very ugly. Is the fact that honestly, I, it, listen, I'm gonna get it on the internet. I know Jesus was not white, y'all. Okay, so you can't <laughs> yeah, tell right. me my God is a white man. So inherently, in what it is, I don't see the racism in the original. You know, but how it's been used? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think it's important if you have a kernel of truth, and I don't know that we'll all even agree with what that kernel of truth is, mm -hmm. and someone or something falls away from that truth, does, does it make the truth ineffective? Or does it make the falling away the most ineffective thing? Does that make sense? In other words, if there is a God, and I believe there is, but if there is a God and someone distorts that understanding or concept of God, does it make the God ineffective or does it make what they've done in falling away from that kernel of truth? There's a very simple way that this could be resolved, right? If there is, if there is any type of God, right? It could very <laughs> much be cleared up by them, by them appearing and, and dispelling all of these discourses, all of these different beliefs, all of these different, and, and um, we, it, it could possibly end the conversation or it could end all of this discourse. Bro, right it doesn't here. matter what race <laughs> I, he I was. was yeah. there because so we much. believe that oh, he already no. did that. Yeah, it, it's, you know? it's, well, really, so, it's really common too in the Old We Testament. already believe that and yeah. they killed him. So yes, it's like, because of that. yeah. And, and I agree, a, there's, there's a lot of evidence that shows in that. I mean, you guys were talking about evidence uh, earlier and there's evidence in the Old Testament how the angel of the Lord had come in, how he had transformed Saul's life into Paul. There's a lot of evidence in seeing the the, the bush burning on fire. I mean, Moses, speaking to Moses. Um, and so uh, there is a lot of in that belief of understanding where Christ has come from and revealed himself through that, through <laughs> Old Testament. The Bible is a book that is that does not have footnotes. Mm -hmm. It does not have points of reference, yeah. which means that it is a book of allegory. It is a book yeah. of stories. It is a book of things that cannot necessarily be replicated today. You can't see this. No one can talk through a burning bush today. If that could be replicated today, then maybe we could see the validity in that. Well, maybe if you uh, have some DMT, which <laughs> kind of leads into a lot of my own personal belief system, because I don't actually identify as atheist. I'm probably more agnostic than anything. Mm -hmm. And in recent years, I've come into a lot of African spirituality by way of IFA, which mm -hmm. a lot of people in West Africa would practice. Now I'm going to say something. IFA. Say it. You're free gets, to say you know, it. Translated through the slave trade. As long as you don't disrespect nobody, it's fine. Santeria in Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's showing up in hoodoo and voodoo throughout. The Western you know, world basically forced Asian Jesus to work with a exactly. PRD. Exactly. <laughs> which does have elements of that <laughs> when you get into it, but it's misconstrued and that lens of Christianity being put on those things has given it a lot of negative connotation when we really did that to have survival and a way to still connect to our culture. Culture. And a lot of it still was able to survive through sharing that belief. System. Can I can I say something real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Liberian. So like my parents, they're from Liberia. They're mm -hmm. they're African, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I grew up with a lot of Nigerians as well from the Igbo tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, and I see. And I don't know. Are you are you black uh, American as yeah. well? Like okay, cool. So. I see this, this trend of people coming into African spirituality as if to say that that's something that even people in West Africa like believe in. Mm -hmm. But if you interact with those people, like the African people that are over here now, yeah, they probably like don't. They, they, they don't. In yeah, fact, they, 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 they also see it as, they also, a lot of them also see it as witchcraft. Because they've also been colonized. Mm -hmm. no, well, see, that's, that's another thing, right? Mm -hmm. If we're going to talk about colonization, then we can't take away those black Africans' freedom to also choose a religion for themselves. No, you know? they can totally so choose it's, for themselves. <laughs> yeah, so like, issue. so to say that they're colonized and that's why they believe what they believe, I feel like you're looking down on their ability to choose and understand right and wrong for themselves. But it's just and a I kind fact of that, that they were this colonized, little... specifically Nigeria, because the majority of what I know about myself, my people did come from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that was colonized by the British. So see so, how you have the ability to look at your beliefs, and even if colonization had some type of oppressive thing on you, you still have the ability to choose whether or not <laughs> you, uh, that you believe in that. So what do the, the uh... Africans that are over there. They which have one are you talking about, uh, Like which figure out you talking what about? parts of their culture are disconnected from their religion, and they can still celebrate it. I want to go in a little bit into my personal story because I know I'm going to rant a little bit. But I grew up in a African Liberian Pentecostal church in Minnesota, and over there, there's so much culture, like we like not even a drip of it. Did I did I even understand that there was like whiteness like involved? You know, 
I, I, we, we have the same food. We sing our Christian songs in the same, in a different way than like white churches do. Even sometimes when I went to different white churches, I would be confused as to why they're not singing it the way that we're singing it. And so to say <laughs> that like Christianity is this thing that deletes culture at its roots, I completely disagree with that yeah. because that's where I grew up in. Yeah. Do black atheists have a response to that? Well, there are different, I mean, th that's similar to how the black church is here in the United States, right? The Catholic Church probably does not do as much singing as as like maybe oh, a Baptist. Got, oh yeah, no, we got we, we okay, got gospel masses out yeah. here. <laughs> okay, in LA, okay. But there, yeah. okay, well, that's, well, that's interesting to know. But there are yeah, there are definitely some cultural differences in the way Black folks practice, and and that part of that is due to the racism because black folks weren't allowed in certain white churches. What we don't understand about like white supremacy and colonization that at times it, it's mental. Yeah. It can be mental. So even if the older one? it isn't over oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. someone physically oppressing you, when we talk about the institutional practices, it means that it is ingrained mm -hmm. into your mentality that it doesn't matter who it is, it, even in your Pentecostal practice, if you are still worshiping Jesus, 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 and there are a lot of evangelical, like even on the continent now, where they are still putting white Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think in, the, in Ghana, there is a yeah. huge statue of white Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if it is a predominantly black practice, it is still sort of rooted in a in a Eurocentric and white mentality, and we have to think about that. Yeah, okay. exactly. I, I think that's a response. Well, to the actually, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask, like, what carryovers? And I'm actually very curious about this. What carryovers do you see from uh, white colonization that you see in African? Uh, practices today, other than white Jesus, because we can look at white Jesus and be like, I can even dis I can even agree that we should probably put up less white Jesuses up in churches, mm -hmm. up yeah. in black churches, up in African churches. But separate from that, what do you think is being <clears throat> deleted from our culture and our cultural expression of Christianity by adopting that into our belief system? So it's the way we treat women. Exactly. It's the way we treat children. Yeah. It yeah. is the way that inherently. We, kind, we still don't stick together as well as yeah. we should. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that are holdovers. Num from, 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 like, I, I, I can't, I, I'm not saying that name, but thank you for the follow. to divide and conquer mm -hmm. us, the way we still other each other in a lot of ways. The one thing that we hear as atheists is that we're trying to be white. Yeah. We hear that, well, you're, you're rejecting your blackness as an atheist, which is the yeah. furthest thing from the truth. Yeah. It is my blackness that defines my atheism. Yes. You know, it, it is because I care about black folks and the black community, no, and, and even in our diversity, that makes that 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 has defined or that has determined my conclusion. I'll just say that like sometimes we conflate like general human nature. And I don't mean to disregard everything that you're saying. Mm -hmm. Because I still think tribalism exists outside What's of up, Christianity. Sir? I still think misogyny out exists outside of uh, Christianity. I think racism exists outside of Christianity and all of these other things. So a lot of the times what you're seeing is general human nature um, coming atop a, a belief system that preaches love and it dilutes it because that's who we are as humans. We're gonna take something that's meant for love and we're gonna take something that's meant for unity, not uniformity, and we're gonna use that to, to um, destroy like our relationships with other people. But the reason why I call myself a Christian is because I can look at a standard that's much higher than myself to say, hey, even though I have a lot of these uh, differences with other people, we're all the same under God. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, move on to a... closing statements. Yeah. For me, remain curious, ask questions, do your own research. We should be creating things that we want to see out in the world, ways that we want to replicate goodness, love, charity, taking care of one another. So ultimately, mm -hmm. that's what's most important. And why we always got to make God a he, like. <laughs> <laughs> I love the conversation. I love the individuality. I love the, 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 um, the commitment to it. I don't have. And that's true, it's true, you know, you know, you know, they say God himself doesn't have a gender, by the way. <laughs> by heaven or hell to put anyone in. I have a personal relationship and I throw it out and I share it and hopefully Except it makes for a Jesus. difference for the other person. And if it doesn't, he's given them the, cho the right to not choose it. As we discover but what do I know? You know what I'm people, saying? You know, I'm, 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 who we are I'm people, an omni-believer, you know what I'm saying? So the divine, whether or not it's the universe, whether or not it's some other form of spirituality, that being open to the revelation that I am bigger, I am better, and eat, eternal life is mine, whether or not that is the reincarnation or whether or not that is in living with him eternally. So 
I think that everyone here has uh, beautiful backgrounds and they all gave beautiful stories, you know? And um, my, my, my final thought is just that um, when it does come to black Christians with the historical value of the black church, I do believe that it is inherent for black Christians to dedicate a portion of themselves to the black power struggle and the black movement. And that is my